If there's one thing that Google Ads people will tell you, pretty much universally, it is, Broadmatch is bad, okay? But what if I told you that Broadmatch isn't bad? Not necessarily. Now, of course, just chucking Broadmatch keywords into a, a random ad group, probably not a good thing. But if you use Broadmatch and you use it with smart bidding and you do it the right way, you can get really good results. We're seeing that with the campaigns we're running for our own business here at Local Digital. I have been running Pure Broad with smart bidding for the last few months now, and I've been seeing lower CPCs, lower cost per leads, and pretty good results. We're getting leads for keywords that we would never have targeted with a typical exact match build that we might've done in the past. But before we get into this, there is a caveat. If you have a brand new account, don't do it. This is only for accounts that have conversion data, that have a history, a track record of conversions that Google's machine learning, that its algorithms can use to, to make decisions. If you're starting from scratch, always recommend going with manual bidding first and getting the runs on the board yourself first before letting Google's machine learning and its algorithms go and do its thing. So that's the caveat out of the way. If you've got an age account, let's go take a look at what you can do to use smart bidding and pure broad. You wanna use specifically the maximize conversions option and then set a target CPA of some sort. Then you just put a whole bunch of broad keywords into that campaign in one ad group put in a responsive search ad, and then monitor results. Once it's up and running, constantly check that search terms report and make sure that no junk's coming through and then just exclude the junk with negative keywords. Now, the reason that this works really well is because it's, it's the smart bidding side of things that are really making a difference. It's not just the same as adding broad keywords to a normal campaign. So that definitely is bad, okay? But smart bidding looks at all sorts of things like the device people's on, the ad characteristics, the location, time of day, uh, remarketing lists, operating systems, the browser they're on, the language, the search query that they're using and that they've used in the past. So Google has all these data points on people. So when you are putting those data points, uh, I guess the machine learning that it's got there against the campaign, you're letting Google go out and show an ad to people because it thinks they're going to convert. And then with the broad keywords, you're just really letting them go wide. You're not putting any sort of, uh, I guess, restrictions on what Google can do. You're basically giving it a really loose parameter. You know, here we want you to go after digital marketing keywords, let's say. But other than that, go hell for leather, Google, because you know everything about everyone and our account has this conversion data in that. You know what the conversions are we wanna get, so we're gonna let you go out and do that. And it works really well. It's been working really well for us. So let's have a little look at how we set our campaigns up so that you can go ahead and try it out in your own accounts. So here we are, this is our digital marketing broad um, with target cost per acquisition, uh, smart bidding set up on it. And the first thing I wanna to go to is the settings here. And basically when we're setting these accounts up, there's a few things that we like to have in place to make sure that it's got a good chance of success. So first of all, goals. We don't just use account goal settings, we use campaign specific goal settings. So every account might have all different types of um, goals in it. We wanna make sure that only the conversions that matter to us are being used to optimize this account for. So in our case, it's phone calls, and then it's also lead form submissions on our website. So we've gone ahead and set them as the goals for the campaign. In terms of the network, we only go with search network. We don't include search partners. We don't include Google Display Network. Generally, I've found them junk pretty much all of the time. So I'll always make sure it's just a search network. In terms of bidding, as I said, we go with the maximize conversions bidding strategy. And then the important thing is to set a target cost per action. So in this case, we've gone with 190 here. What I recommend doing is making your target cost per action lower than what you're actually happy with and just seeing how Google goes. If you need to go a bit higher with it in time, you can, you know, Google's always gonna recommend, oh, well, you can you know, put a bigger target CPA and look at all these more conversions you'll get. But what I find is go low with it and see if Google can actually generate the, um, the leads at that lower rate rather than just letting them go at that higher rate. So on the settings side of things, that's the main things we like to do. Then I will run it with just one ad group. So if you jump into here, you can see I've named my ad group broad and look at all of these ugly broad match keywords here. Like it's pretty horrific to look at if you've run Google ads for any length of time, but it works. So we've gone in here and put these horrific broad match keywords and then that's it. No phrase match, no exact match, nothing else is going on there. And we're just letting Google do what it needs to do. 
In terms of the ads that we're running, I basically just have one ad set up at the moment. So it's this responsive search ad. What I recommend doing is of course, editing it and making sure that you, you're using as many of the, the headlines and descriptions as possible so that you're giving it a lot of stuff to go out there and test. But then really that's it. We let Google do what it needs to do with that responsive search ad. And you can see here, we've been running it for a while now and basically it's getting the performance information for the different headlines and, <coughs> excuse me, you can see that over the last 90 days here, it's been serving up a lot of different combinations and Google is going out and finding the best performers itself and favoring them in the auction and showing those versions of the ads the most. So you can see here, it's showing a lot of different versions of that ad creative that I put in there. Um, of course, make sure all of your extensions are running too. So whatever is relevant for you, but I'll have call out structured snippet and phone call extension as well so that you're getting more real estate in the search results. But other than that, that's basically the setup. So it's one campaign. I, I, I theme my campaigns. So in this case, the theme is digital marketing. So all of the broad match keywords in that one ad group are related to digital marketing. And then I just have that one responsive search ad running and then all of the ad extensions. That's it. But what the big thing is, is going to be negative keywords. So if you're letting Google have all of this free reign to do what it wants, you're going to need to sort of um, bring it in, rein it in uh, in time, because if you don't, it's going to waste a lot of money. So by default, you want to have certain types of negative keywords set up. So obviously all the, the main, the big waste ones are things around free, cheap, you know, anything like that you want gone DIY, uh, anyone looking for jobs, careers, that sort of stuff. You want those types of negative keywords in there. Any questions, you know, how, what, when, where, will, why, can, that sort of stuff. You want negative keywords for that. Um, education, training, courses, all that sort of stuff. So we have, you know, generic lists that we will apply to every account, every campaign, sorry, for all of that sort of stuff. But then what you want to be doing is spending a lot of time in that search terms report, looking at the stuff that's coming back. And you'll start to see certain terms that just shouldn't be in there. So for example, people might be searching for other countries or other cities. So go and add every country and go and add all the capital cities around the world as negative keywords in your account so that you're only really focusing on the city or the country that matters to you. Now there's lists of them that you can find online with a quick Google search. That's no problem. But then you might also find that there's all sorts of random stuff coming through in your search terms report that is just wasting money. Make sure you're constantly in the account every couple of days, checking that search terms report and expanding on your negative keywords list. But really, that's all there is to it. Once that's up and running, I've been finding that we're getting leads for terms that we would never have targeted with an exact match build, for example. So just the keyword marketing, we're getting leads coming in and I would never have gone for something that broad. I would have thought it would be a waste of money, but I've been finding that with this account, with this account build, the CPC is quite low on it. It's getting out there in front of people and we've had leads come back. So well worth the test. And as a matter of fact, you know, these days, a lot of the campaigns that I'm building are using pure broad with this smart automated bidding. So hopefully it works for you. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any feedback on how it's gone in your world.